usapang kalusugan sa Health Check Plus. Alamin ang mga payong medikal galing sa mga totoong eksperto. Ang kalaman ay kapangyarihan. Usapang kalusugan sa Health Check Plus. Mapagmahal na araw, Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao. Ako po si Teacher Ellie, Ellie Campos Banayat, dito sa Health Check Plus sa DZRH Radio, Digital TV, Facebook, YouTube at website. Tiyak na may Valentine's hangover pa ang marami sa atin at alam niyo po ba na kasabay ng Heart's Day ang Ash Wednesday. Ang paghahanda na, ta- na tayo sa pagpasok ng Holy Week na maghuhudyat din ng pagdating ng tag At dito na ang mainit-init na balita pa na tinatanggap. Uh, aprobado na ang isang, ng isang committee ng House of Representatives ang paggamit ng medical marijuana. Kaya naman, inimbitahan natin muli si Dr. Carl Edeher, ang ating suking anesthesiologist pain specialist doctor para pag-usapan ito. Tulad ng divorce, ang isyong ito ay napaka-controversial. Dangerous drug pa rin ang turing natin sa marijuana pero ito ay pinayagan ng gamitin for medical and recreational use sa ilang bansa tulad ng Amerika at Thailand. Si Doc Carl ay President of Philippine Society of Anesthesiologists, Bataan, Olonga po at Zambales Chapter at nagtapos ng kanyang fellowship training sa St. Luke's Medical Center, Quezon City. Ang nagtapos naman siya ng kanyang residency sa Jose Reyes Memorial Medical Center at ng kanyang medisina sa University of Santa Tomas Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. Magandang araw po, Dr. Carl. Batiin po natin ang libag-ibong nanonood at tagapakinib sa iba't ibang platforms ng HealthCheck Plus. Yes, magandang umaga po. Good to see everyone and salamat po sa pag-guest muli sa akin this time around. With the same topic. With the same topic. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yes, opo. Gusto namin ma-rinig uh, ang inyong opinions po regarding this, lalo na may updates po tayo on the um, pagpasa ng mga medical marijuana bill and laws po. Dr. Carl, sa inyo pong pagkakaalam, ano po ba ang mga posibleng medical uses ng marijuana or medical cannabis? Well, first of all, na-excite ka ba? Na, ano? <laughs> na-excite ka ba na well, ano, ni-streamline na yung pagka-legalize ng marijuana? Teacher Eldy? <laughs> yes po, exciting po. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, ano, it's something na to be ano man, hopeful about. Pero let's first of all, let's review muna yung mga possible medical uses ng, mga, ng medical cannabis. The most common indication, lagi itong sinasabi sa, lagi itong sinasabi sa mga sa US na sinasabi nila na Gamot daw siya sa intractable pediatric seizure, Lennox Gestalt syndrome, cancer, Parkinson's anxiety. But I would like to clarify na um right now hindi pa exactly sa pediatrics tatlo lang po yung pedia FDA approved epilepsy epileptic diseases na pwede pong gamitin ng medical marijuana. That is number one, Dravet syndrome. This is a genetic epileptic syndrome, same as tuberous sclerosis complex, also a genetic syndrome. And Lennox Gestalt syndrome, a quite co- a complicated kind of seizure. So those are seizure medications, no? No, now kuntitig na natin. Um, these are rare. These are rare types of seizure. So for example, in the general population sa Pilipinas, one percent lamang yung mga may epilepsy, no? Seventy percent dun would respond, would respond to regular medica- uh, regular seizure medications only 30% yung tatawag na intractable no tapos of the 1% nung na merong epilepsy sa Pilipinas 0.5 lang doon 1.5 lang doon yung merong Lennox Gestalt syndrome sobrang baba ng population lang ng mga ganun and some of them would respond to regular epileptic drugs and some of them would yes magbe-benefit from marijuana but not marijuana alone Merong, it's a it's an adjunct medication. So, yeah, bakit ang konti? Mapapat na, ano, papatanong tayo. Exciting na paggamitin na natin si marijuana. But the question here is, bakit ang konti? It is because, until now, kahit ang dami ng gusto na gamitin ng marijuana into legal into legal indications, the, li- the studies are still limited. And some patients kasi may, may interpret euphoria Di ba, pag nagmamariwana daw, parang sumasaya ka, euphoric ka, that would be, that is, iniwasan kasi natin yung euphoria yung ipapalit dun sa symptom. 
they misinterpret it as alleviation of the symptom, but not really. Para kang ano, pag sinabi mo, may problema ka, iinom ako, pag gising mo, may problema ka pa rin eh. Hindi naman nawala yung problema mo nun. So, hindi siya direct treatment. It just distracts you from what is wrong and what is what needs treatment. Ayun. So, um, sa approval po ba nitong substitute bill para sa medical marijuana use? Uh, nagsimula daw po ito sa isang recommendation ng technical working group ng House na nag-draft and consolidate ng related bills. Ano po, Dok, par sa tingin naman ninyo ang mga maaaring effect at pangamba ng medical community tungkol po sa legalization ng medical marijuana dito sa ating bansa? So, nung nagkaroon ng, ano, nagkaroon ng nung substitute bill, nung na-approve na siya, this week, nagkaroon yung, um, nung Feb 13, nagkaroon ng meeting ang PMA with nagkaroon sila ng press conference kung saan ginather nila lahat ng concerned societies and subspecialties sa Pilipinas para to stand against that bill. Ang sinasabi nila, mm-hmm. meron silang 10 point 10 point agenda. Um basically what the what PMA said, which also I approve, it said that the legislative bill on the use of marijuana other than those approved for the specific medical conditions by the current Philippine FDA should not be used. So, the problem here is that, um, the problem kasi with this substitute bill, sinasabi nung ang um, ineemphasize lang nila dito ay kailangan dun sa medical use. Tama? So, like what I discussed, what we continually discussed, there's two, there are two the dalawang components ng marijuana, the cannabidiol and the tetrahydrocannabinol, the THC. THC, most, of, most often the bad effects, the CBD, the quote-unquote yung hinahanapan natin ng therapeutic effects. So, sabi, for yung therapeutic use naman, which is the CBD. Now, the problem with the substitute bill, bill is that hindi yung CBD yung pinopromote. Pinopromote nila yung both pati yung tetrahydrocannabinol. Mm. So, sa Congress hearing, gusto nila, pati pagtatanim ng marijuana, papayagan, pagpaprocess ng marijuana. And dapat, yung dapat na CBD lang yung i, 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 i market at aayusin at ipoproduce, it's not true. Sabi sa ano, all types of cannabis. So, according to do sa press con na, na pinaano ng PMA, Sabi ng epidemiologist, this might be a Trojan horse. Why? Kasi yung doctors, this would be the entryway para magkaroon ng widespread use ng marijuana and illegal use of it. Sure, it will be regulated, pero mas madali na yung access. Ngayon pa lang, na bawal na siya, people get access to it. How much more na slightly nagkakaroon na na access, mas quote-unquote magiging legal na siya. So yun yung primary concern namin. No? And then the second concern is, bakit siya um bakit siya is in streamline ng ng Congress or Senate ba? Congress pa lang no? Congress yes. pa lang ba, teacher? Yeah. But siya ni streamline ng ano ng Congress and eventually Senate no? Bakit eh, there's already B5 and FDA who's regulating those kind of drugs. Dapat sila yon kasi at the end of the day sila rin yung magpo-pull out in case there is po- there are post dangers of the certain drug. So which leads me to the third point, who would be accountable? ipapayagi siya ng mga senators sa mga congressmen and then some people some people's lives would get deranged because of that who would get accountable yung mga yung mga congressmen and senators na nag-approve noon or kaming mga doctor na nagreseta noon syempre kasi sihi ng pasyente kami so the burden is the, the the burden falls on the burden falls on the um the, the prescriptor so yun yung talagang ano namin niwas natin so um, we all know sa Thailand, di ba legal yung marijuana doon? They all started as a medical, they all started as a medical, ano, na medical lang pwede. Tapos eventually, naging ano, naging recreation na siya. Naging for recreation purposes na. So, uh, ever since it was approved, nagkaroon ng, so, um, a significant increase in anxiety and emergencies and toxicities sa marijuana. And, Marijuana is a drug that is very difficult to detox because it's lipophilic. It's um nasa nasa dumidikit siya sa katawan natin and matagal siyang i-wash out. So it's really concerning for the medical community. That's why they had this we are united against that bill. 
Okay. Kayo po ay isang anesthesiologist, Dr. Carl, at kadalasan ay exposed po kayo sa mga controlled substances na ginagamit din sa surgeries and procedures. Bakit po hindi dapat maging pangmalawa ka ng availability at usage ng drugs tulad po ng opioids or drugs for severe pain? Well, of course. Um, the short answer here is abuse. The the, mm. the simple word, the simple answer is abuse. Um, CBD, marijuana muna, no? CBD is very prone to abuse, especially because of the euphoria it gives. Parang sayang, pasyano na papawild mga, mga, mga uh, pasyente. And you don't want your grab driver or your lawyer or your surgeon to be high on CBD, di ba? You don't want them drunk mm. while operating on you, di ba? Because we all know that marijuana impairs functional capacity. Now, anesthetically, most of the drugs that I prescribe and I use to patients are pretty much potent. It's so potent that kayang-kaya kang patulugin, hiwain nang di ka nagigising. So of course, with great power comes great responsibility. And when you hand that power to patients, when I hand this drug and then I prescribe it to patients, they need to be educated and they need to be regulated well. How strict are we when it comes to that? Hindi lahat ng doctors have the power to to prescribe the way we do kasi meron kami tinatawag na S2 license. S2 kasi is a subspecial is a subset of doctors na sobrang regulated yung mga specific kind of drugs, yung mga powerful drugs. Every prescription we do, meron yang duplicate copy and we submit it to PDEA. And we ourselves get tested every time nire-renew namin yung mga yung license namin diyan. And madalas din nire-renew yan every three years. So, yeah, um what the one of the other issues here Yes, legal naman si, ano, same naman yung issue na paglasing ka, di ba? Paglasing ka or legal naman, may harm din naman yung alcohol and yung, ano, and yung um, tobacco, sabi nila. Eh bakit hindi pa legalize? Ba't yung legal? Tapos yung marijuana, hindi. Well, the answer here is, nakita na ba kayo ng doktor na pindescribe namin mag-vape kayo? <laughs> or, or, mag, or uminom kayo ng alak? Wala, di ba? So, wala talaga kaming, you will never have us um, prescribe uh, alcohol and tobacco. So, it would be very wary, we would be very wary about marijuana as well. Hmm. Balikan po natin, Dr. Carl, yung nabanggit ninyo kanina na merong mga dangers or um, harm no sa kalukugan kapag sinasabing medical marijuana or cannabis ay gagamitin para sa recreational or non-medical use. Um, dapat po bang ma-focus lang ang usapin upal dito sa medical purposes only? Ano po yung opinion niyo on this? Well, ano, that, that's the that's the first step. <laughs> Hindi lang, that's the only step that I am concerned with. Hindi, wala man ako pa, ano eh, I mean, it's out of my hands if it becomes for recreational use. Pero we want to gatekeep it before it gets legalized to medical to medical use. We are not, of course, disclaimer, we are not against it, against it, totally against it. Right now, we are saying that there are no enough evidence yet for it to become um, a first line, uh, a very, very good medication for any indications that people are proposing. Now, I mean, yeah, let's dissect the question. Like, um, dati sabi nila yung sa Parkinson's, sabi nila Parkinson's, um, may mga research sa Europe na sinasabi it has it may have antioxidant and anti-inflammatory and neuroprotective but always lang like sinasabi much more research is needed to understand this so like what i said THC and CBD they want they want to say it should be separated first the CBD yung CBD yung mo ano yung hinahanapan ng research and then to establish the right doses di pa nga alam kung number one, is it safe Number two, is it effective? Not yet. Ay, ayaw muna nating i-prescribe yan kapag di pa na-establish yung medication na yun. Dok, nabanggit ninyo yung Parkinson's, cancer, and some seizure uh, disorders kanina. Bilang pain specialist, ano naman po ang mga kadalasang types of pain na uri ng sakit ang inyong sinusuri at binibigyan ng solusyon? Uh, of um, course, at ano? Saka, yes, dagdag din po natin, Dok, Carl, kung ano yung mga types of drugs na kadalasang nababagay na binibigay sa mga patients ninyo, lalong-lalo na yung mga nabanggit ninyo like cancer patients, saka yung mga iba pang patients natin na may uh, seizure, medi- seizure disorders. Ayan, as pain specialist, of course, lahat ng sakit except yung mga, yung common joke sa amin, except yung mga heartbreaks ninyo. Pero, 
siguro pwede na rin yun. <laughs> Pero, de, ano. Um, all types of pain. Chronic pain, acute pain, trauma pain. Um, sometimes, there's some specialty in pain medicine about genetics pain. Hinaaral nila yung genes. Kung ano yung mas okay sa Asians, ano yung mas okay sa Caucasians. So, we study all types of pain, all types of medications, and all therapeutic claims. And uh, meron kaming governing body, which we call, of course, in the Philippines, we have Philippine Society, Pain Society of the Philippines. Tapos above that is a bigger umbrella called International Association for the Study of Pain. Sa IASP, sinabi nila na there's still a huge knowledge gap between the e- efficacy for cannabis and pain. That's why not yet. Not yet. Mm-hmm. Doctor, meron po bang danger or pinsala sa kalusugan kapag ang sinasabing medical marijuana or cannabis ay gamitin bilang recreational or non-medical use, lalong-lalo na sa ating mga kabataan? Yeah, of course. Um, I would like to really talk into that because lagi natin sinasabi na uh, people are focusing on the good things. no, And then we forget all, uh, most of the time the bad things. But so far... What ang sinasabi ng mga research is consistent yung mga bad if ay hindi consistent yung mga good effects like kunyari na relieve sa pain, na relieve sa anxiety, na relieve sa movement disorder, pero consistent yung mga bad effects. So that shows a lot about mm-hmm. the drug. First of all, in pedia sa mga bata, tumaab sa womb pa lang ng mga nanay, tumatawid sa placenta. And that affects growth of the baby. Nag uh, nagpa Um, nag, meron tinatawag na IUGR, intrauterine growth retardation, mabagal, pangit yung pag-grow ng baby sa loob. Tapos magka, mag-i-impair yung neurodevelopmental functions niya. Magka, it would also affect low birth weight, magiging masyadong magaan yung baby. And ayaw naman natin yun, di ba? Um, sa mga breastfeeding mothers, pangit din yung magiging growth ni baby dahil lumalap, nag-cross ng... Uh, nag- dumaan na sa breast milk, nahalo sa breast milk yung, yung mga... yung mga active components ng marijuana. And according to the an addiction uh, the addiction specialists from the recent um recent press con uh, marijuana when you are taking marijuana you are likely to increase the risk of schizophrenia and psychosis. It also exacerbates bipolar disorder to greater symptoms. About bipolar ka na nga lumalala pa. It gives you more suicidal thoughts and laging sinasabi mas lose ka actually hindi eh. mas lalo mas mataas yung incidence ng social anxiety so the legalization of um the inc- upon legal in Thailand upon legalization the incidence of people having cannabis use disorder spiked from 10 to 30% it also of course increases your risk for cardiac um, for heart attack arrhythmia especially atrial fibrillation um more Um, mas mga lumalala pa siya kasi madalas yung mga nagpa-cannabis, nagsusmoke din sila and nag-uminom pa ng alak. Now, sinabi nila for medical use, no? When you are taking marijuana for quote-unquote medical use, it increases your chances for a psych disorder 70%. 70% mas more chances of winning, quote-unquote. No? For recreational use, kunyari wala ka namang sakit, ginagamit mo siya, it also increases your risk 40, um, to 40%. Mataas yun kasi the average risk sa mga people na walang quote-unquote comorbids, the general population is only 15%. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, those are sobrang da, ang dami ng risk ng marijuana. And, of course, it's our job to to tell the risks and the, and the risk and the possible consequences of taking the drug. And, um, napakabilis po ng ating oras, Dr. Carl, no? And, Um, maraming salamat kasi nabigyang dinaw, no? lalong-lalo na yung harms and risk na involved sa paggamit ng marijuana, whether it be recreational or medical use. Bago po tayo magtapos, ano naman po ang maaaring gawin ng ating mga kababayan kapag ang kanilang kasama sa buhay ay patuloy na nakakaranas ng severe pain, lalong-lalo na po yung mga uri na tinatawag na cancer pain. Yes, cancer pain. Um, again, marijuana, with marijuana, Marijuana has never known to treat cancer. Okay? Cancer pain yung sinasabi, pero hindi pa rin yan proven. Again, the only thing the Pain Society always says, and the International Association Study of Pain, the only proven benefit of marijuana in the pain world is the HIV pain, yung mga patients na may HIV. And hindi pain scores yung na-improve, but general well-being. Kasi there's, um, there's this, uh, there's this thought 
there's this, this school of thought na the mari- marijuana is parang something with that may nagwo-work sa mga autoimmune cells natin. So those are yet yet to be explored also. Now, hindi naman po masama na you would hope into more medications and more access for your loved ones life, quality of life, especially those who have cancer. But I will always nire-remind ko po sa sa mga taong bayan na you have to look on the side effects also. Okay? We need to gather and establish evidence to establish the dosing, the side effect, and to ma- how to manage the side effect before we could even give it to you. Because at the end of the day, kanino kayo tatakbo? Di ba? Kanino kayo magtatanong for side effects? Kanino kayo magtatanong about how to manage the possible complications? You would, you would ask it sa mga nag-prescribe and not the ones who legalized it. And that is where the problem lies. So, yeah, uh, sabi nga nung ano, sabi nga nung isang isang prominent author sa nung nag-visit siya sa PGH, si Atul Gawande, he said there are two reasons why we fail in health. Number one is ignorance, which is of course uh, we we fix it by educating. And number two is ineptitude, meaning the knowledge is there but we fail to implement it correctly. And let's avoid fake news when it comes to that. Okay? <laughs> Napaka uh, dami naming nalaman sa inyo, Dr. Carl. Salamat po at napakadami pa rin talagang uh, pag-aaral at research tungkol sa uh, marijuana para sa medical use. So thank you very much po for uh, the information na naibigay ninyo sa ating nakikinig at nanonood. Thank you, Teacher Ellie. Thank you. Huwag po kayong bibitaw. Pakinggan po natin muli ang panayam natin kay Miss May Padilla. CEO ng Clean Official Project Philippines Incorporated kung papaano magbigay ni T at sa ating mga kabataang may kapansanan sa bibig. Wellness tips, susunod na. <music>